to our virtual lab today that's all about Newton's laws. My name is Maggie Connolly and I'm going to be leading you through our experiments today. So we are going to go ahead and get started right away. We're going to start right here with this really cool experiment where we have some liquid in this container and I'm going to add a solid. Let's see if I can see that. There we go. <laughs> and then um, we're going to see what happens. So I'm going to add this liquid, or I'm going to add this solid to the liquid. I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I'm going to turn it around. And then while we are waiting for something to happen, let's go ahead and review New Newton's three laws of motion. So the first law of motion is what we call the law of inertia. And basically, whatever things are doing is what they want to do. So an object that is, re that is at rest wants to stay at rest until a force makes it move. And an object that is moving wants to stay moving until a force makes it stop. Newton's second law talks about the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. Oh, good, yes, look at that. Right, let's come. All right, I dropped it again. I'm sorry, I'll get it in a minute. So Newton's second law talks about the relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go through our experiments. And then Newton's third law is that for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. So I'm going to ask you right now to make a prediction. You just saw what happened. It looked like my canister, like the top of it, went crazy and it just went really high and all over the place. So I wonder, which of Newton's laws do you think best explains this demonstration? So think about it and make your prediction. And while you're doing that, I'm just going to move this out of the way because we don't need it anymore. All right. So now that we have our prediction, we're going to come back to that at the end of our lesson. So let's, uh, let's look back here at this cart. And I have this cart right here. It's got some wheels on it. It's kind of heavy. And I want to make this cart move. So I need to overcome its inertia. So we're talking about Newton's first law right now. It's at rest. So in order to make it move, we have to add a force. And a really easy force is that I could just push it. All right. So that made our cart go a little bit. Now what do you think might happen if I added more force? So if I push this cart a little bit harder, what is going to happen to its acceleration? Let's think about it. Let's find out. All right. So if I add more force, then we get more acceleration. And that's actually part of Newton's second law. We, if we increase our force, we're going to increase our acceleration. But I don't want to just have to follow my cart and just keep pushing it all day. Like, that seems a little silly, right? So what if I used a leaf blower? Do you think this will move my cart? Well, we're going to find out. Now, this sound is going to be a little bit loud, so just be aware. Um, but let's see if my leaf blower will move the cart. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> to make it move a little bit faster, maybe a little bit more seamlessly. So I was thinking about like boats, sailboats. When you see a sailboat on the water, it has that, those giant sails and those help to catch that wind and it helps to move the boat. What if we added a sail to my car? Well, I have a sail right here, so let's find it. All right. So now I have the sail on my car. And let's see what happens when I add the leaf blower. Again, loud noise. Ready? Three, two, one. All right, so I think that we are getting closer to where we want to be. But again, I don't want to have to follow my cart all day with that leaf blower. It's the same thing as I don't want to put I have to move it and push it all day, right? So what if I attached the leaf blower to my cart. That would make sense, right? Because it's working now. So let's just attach it and then hopefully my cart can just go forever. So we're going to make a prediction now. And I want you to tell me, so now that I have this whole system, let's see, is our cart going to move forward that way? 
backward this way, or no movement at all. So which way will my cart move? So make your prediction. Does everyone have it? All right, let's find it. I'm going to step over to the side just in case it does go backwards, and we're going to go in three, two, one. <laughs> diagram you'll see that we have the black part is the cart the yellow is the leaf blower and the white part is the sail there are a lot of different forces acting on this car but we're really going to concentrate on the air so the first force of the air is from the leaf blower so the leaf blower is pushing air in that direction we can see that with the arrow but what happens when the air hits the sail well, the air is going to get pushed back with that equal and opposite reaction force. Now, if you look at those two arrows, you'll notice that they're equal. And that means that those forces cancel each other out. So when our forces cancel each other out, we have no net movement. Our, our net movement is zero. So the cart doesn't go anywhere. So instead of having my system look like this, what if I just turn the leaf blower around? Okay. All right. So let's do that. Make sure that it's nice and sturdy on there. Okay. All right, we're going to make another prediction. Now, will the cart move forward, backward, or no move? So make your prediction. Do we have it? Okay, let's find it. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> We want the ethanol gas. 
Um, I am going to see if there's any liquid left. I'm just going to pour that out. Okay. So what we're going to do, just a second, we're going to add some heat to this. Remember, this is a flammable gas. So the gas that's inside is going to become flammable. And I wonder what's going to happen. Can you make a prediction? Right. We have our prediction. All right. We are going to make this bottle move in three, two, one. Whoa, look at that. So our bottle rocket moved. And we can talk about Newton's laws for this experiment as well. So the first one is, of course, Newton's, Newton's third law, the one that you would automatically think about, right? So we had our, our fuel in here, and when we added the, the heat, then a bunch of that gas shot out that way, which caused the bottle to move that way. That's the obvious one. But really, we can make an argument for all of Newton's three laws for this experiment. We already talked about the third. For the first law, well, when we started, it was just like this. We had to overcome its inertia. It wasn't moving. So how did I do that? I had to add some fuel that would be a force, right? For the second law, we talk about that a relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. So if I added more alcohol, then I would have had more force, which means that this bottle would have accelerated faster. If I added more mass, if I had a bigger bottle, it actually would have accelerated slower because there's more stuff that we need to move. So when we increase mass, we decrease acceleration. So, and then of course, Newton's third law, that action and reaction force that we already talked about. So with a bottle rocket, you can make an argument for all three of Newton's laws of motion. And that is actually the same for our first experiment. So we had this container, and in this container I had some liquid, just some water, and the solid that I added, it's called um, Alka-Seltzer, and it's what we call an effervescent tap. What that means is that when it comes into contact with the water, it's going to start to like dissolve and we're gonna get all these bubbles, a gas is created. So when I put the lid on, and we turned it upside down, I'm not gonna do that because I do have liquid in this one, but when it's upside down and we have all this gas that's being created, it has to go somewhere. And eventually, it's gonna have so much force that it's gonna like essentially push down on the lid and it's gonna cause my canister to shoot up. So that's the third law. But again, we can make an argument for all of Newton's laws, because with this first law, we needed to overcome its inertia. How did we do that? Well, we added the Alka-Seltzer to create the bubbles, which, added the which created the force. And then for the second law, if we had more Alka-Seltzer, we would have had, excuse me, we would have had more bubbles, and then we would have had a higher force to push that rocket up, or the canister, I should say. But if we had a bigger canister, what's going to happen to that acceleration? It's going to slow down, right? So remember, if you increase the force, you increase acceleration. But if you increase mass, you decrease acceleration. So if you made a prediction that, uh, this, that this experiment was for Newton's first, second, or third law, you are correct, because we can make an argument for all of them. So we really hope that you enjoyed hanging out with us today, uh, even though it is virtually. We, uh, we hope to see you again as soon as we can. Have a great rest of your day.